Hi, if you like the video, please remember to subscribe. Hi, I'm Rob from RobNonPhoto.com and today we're going to be approaching one of those tricky things uh, that gets in the way if you're a amateur photographer or even, even a pro photographer um, but you're limited for space and you want to create one of those nice white studio type backgrounds. And I'm going to show you a little uh, piece of kit that you can buy relatively cheaply um, that you may well already have hidden away somewhere or one of your relatives may well have uh, hidden away somewhere that enables you to, to, to create that um, uh, seamless backdrop look when you're doing head and head and shoulder shots um, and that little piece of kit is of course you've probably read the title of the video, video is a projector um, reflector screen um, and this is a Fotax one I've got here let's have a quick look so this is the beast you can probably just about see that on the video um, you probably remember these from school and uh, you know, we still kind of use them quite a lot these days uh, but with electronic projectors or what, a lot of the time when you're going to uh, conference rooms and things they'll have uh, one that will pull down but lots of people have these um, at home as well to display their slides so that's why I'm saying it may be worth having a chat with all your relatives and friends and saying look has anybody got a uh, old projector screen I picked this one up from the car boot sale for about a fiver I think it was um, which is nice and cheap and the beauty with these screens is they fold up fairly small but you can store them somewhere easily so for example this one I store in our garage in the in the rafters and basically what you get is um, a big kind of metal tube. I mean, this is well, it's fairly wide. I guess it's about four feet wide, um, and it's on like its own light stand almost. And then uh, what you do to uh, sort of put it to display it, you kind of extend the telescopic arm like thus, and then you can pull out uh, the white background, something like that. Let me move round to the front now. Now. You'll have to forgive me because the, the wide angle view on the camera isn't that wide, but you kind of probably get the idea that what it is. And then what you would do, so in this case, you would just Until you get it so that am I completely white behind now I'm trying to see there's probably I need to go over this one a little bit something like thus so have I got a complete white background no did I do that the right I did the wrong way didn't I something you can imagine sort of like that and then I adjust the camera so I'm like that and it gives me a simple white background however the pièce de résistance, the bit that you do to make it really work like you're in a studio, is that um, obviously you're going to get shadows um, on this particular white background. So this is where you bring in your flashes and you would use this sort of backdrop when you were uh, with, with um, something like a, a two flash or two strobe setup because these um, projector uh, screens are incredibly reflective and incredibly white as you'd imagine and so what you can do is you can set up your flash maybe you'll use a wireless system or maybe you'll set it onto a slave so it'll fire when your other flash fires and what I tend to do with mine is like have it down nice and low like that or over to over to one side and when it fires and when it hits this white background even at quite low powers you get an incredibly white background. Now you do have to be a little bit careful um, because there can be so much light bouncing back that you can get a little bit of flare but if you angle it normally um, you can get it so that you just get a nice crisp white background and you can check your histogram um, to make sure you know it has gone to white. Um, the other thing that's quite important actually as well is say you've had say you've got your flash I know somewhere over here sometimes it's an idea to use some sort of um, um, what, what would I say it's like, like a snoot 
or a flag just to go in front of the flash there to stop any light sort of spilling off and going towards your camera lens to cause flare and that will give you a really cheap and really effective way of getting a really crisp white background a la uh, Bailey, Avedon, all that sort of stuff. You would be a bit limited to kind of head shots, head and shoulder shots, but with the sort of correct framing and the correct sort of focal length, they can be very effective indeed. And the trick often is to sit your subject on a chair or mount this thing quite a lot higher. I've got it, I've got, probably got it quite, quite low at the moment. So you can use it as a plain white background. Um, you can use these as reflectors as well. They're fabulous reflectors. So if you can imagine, say, uh, say the flash was my camera over here, then you know I could use this as a reflector. Or if I had the flash over here, and I could be reflecting it. Um, they really are so white and so uh, neutral and so reflective that they are a really um, useful piece of kit for the DIY amateur photographer or even the pro because they they take up so little room and they're so cheap. What I'll do now, just to sort of finish the video off, I'll squash it down so you can see how big it is and then I'll put some example photos on the end of the video as well so you can kind of see um, what sort of result you can get. Right, so let's squash it down now. So let's take the, the top off there. Let's twist that so that we're out of there. Let's move that onto there. Probably can't see what I'm doing, can you? And then the legs kind of go up. So don't show can you just kind of see the whole of the thing? So what is it? It's probably about four and a half feet tall, including including those legs. In fact, I'm probably make it a little bit shorter by if I move that. If I hold on to that there. Yeah, there we go. So something something like that. So that would fit in the back of a car really easy. So you could take it to people's houses and stuff if you're doing headshots. Um, imagine like Peter Hurley type headshots, this sort of thing's perfect, perfect for that. You've got to be careful because your subject can't move around that much because they'll just start seeing the edges of the uh, of the screen. But I would say, you know, if you see one of these, I mean, this is a, a Fotax uh, projector screen, but if you see any of them, I'm um, going through a song, pick it up, um, marry it up with a couple of flashes. So you've got one flash on the background and at least one flash on your subject. Um, and you, you, actually, you can actually use uh, so ambient light as well, if, as long as you're using your flash to, to, to make the uh, background really white. And you're going to come up with some really nice looking photographs. Excuse me, my name's Rob from robnonphoto.com. Thanks for watching.